of our Bogstown facility, we've had some questions, not only what we're doing up there, but in total, what's Premier's plans as far as our agronomy outlets and our strategy here for Southeast Indiana. I'd like to share a few of our thoughts. First, the presumption we're doing as we make this investment and others is, agriculture is on a path to double. It's not a new notion, but we are proving year after year after year, and to fall of 2018 adds to this, that in fact we're doing a better job of production here in Southeast Indiana. And it's coming from several different ways, speed and efficiency. We see farmers these days are able to plant a crop seven to 10 days, harvest roughly twice that time. And as farmers get larger, they get faster and their demands get greater upon us. It's incumbent upon us to try to do those things that we can, whatever we can do, to put ourselves with them and our capability. The other part of this is we see right now higher removal rates as we get more yield. We take more fertilizer products off with the crop. We also see a shift right now away from ammonia towards other nitrogen sources. And as you go from an 82% product in ammonia to 46 dry urea or 28% solution, it takes more tons, more product, more movement to supply the same amount of nitrogen to a crop. So we are building facilities right now that allow us greater capability to both store, handle, and apply other nitrogen sources outside of ammonia. The other part of this is that we see farmers right now wanting to do more and more positive placement. Now, not only are they putting on different amounts of fertilizer at different times, but they want a wider window. The farmers are now seeing a greater advantage to putting products on closer to when it's needed. Uh, and that requires multiple trips across the field. As we considered this investment, and again, it's in our overall strategy in Southeast Indiana, we came up with four things that we thought that we need to be able to, to sell here if we're gonna have relevance in these markets. The first is in procurement and access. And I'd first start with a major competitor that we have. Names that were familiar to a lot of you a few years ago in PCS, Agrium, and then our local retail arm would be C8, CPS, now have joined forces. That we now have a single entity that the cooperative system is competing against that has up to 70% of North American manufacturing. So 70%, up to 70% can be controlled by one entity in the market. And they're going to the retail now locally to farmers as nutrient. And I think it's, com it's coming on the co-op system something that's farmer owned to always try to put ourselves in a place where we provide an alternative, a choice in any market. And I would suggest when you're competing with something of that size and scale, with that much dominance, and basically approaching a monopoly, if you don't as a choice to that, find ways to aggregate yourselves, you really cannot compete. And we can compete. Your cooperative can compete against this with partnerships and relationships we have like with Growmark, CHS, Winfield, and other co-ops coming together and working together as well. That again, we can provide that choice in that marketplace. The second thing that adds to relevance is in this distribution logistics. Are we doing things well enough? Here's our current footprint in Southeast Indiana. We basically run from Indianapolis to Cincinnati to Louisville. And within that roughly 20, 25% of the state of Indiana, are we of a size and scale and of a convenience and efficiency that we can become the best or most relevant choice? It's said another way, can we own the high ground? Can we put ourselves in a position where we have the best distribution logistics and for anyone else to compete against that has to cut, take on the hill, has to try to knock us off of the best position uh, than what we have. So we have really thought about how can we be the best supplier in this marketplace? There's what Southeast Indiana looks like, uh, roughly. You have the red that represents Premier Facilities, blue Shelby County Co-op, the tan is Lavery Valley, and the white rectangles is everyone else. The dots don't necessarily represent this, but really until we started making investments like Bogstown, back into Cortland, back into Greensburg, we all looked pretty much alike. There was really nothing from a distribution, space, speed standpoint that separated one of these facilities or suppliers away from another. We're in the process of changing that. 
Here's our northern markers. And here's what we're working at. This triangle that was spinning is our Franklin facility. So when you look at our Franklin branch, it's located right in the city. It's around a lot of population. And what we saw we needed to do there, rather than make investments back into a facility that was that far removed from where our products and services needed to be and disrupting not only the town, but the surrounding community, we started saying, let's make an investment more clo and closer to where we need to have it. And so that's what we started looking at. As we started talking about and considering moving a facility, the first thing we looked at was, did we need rail access? I was firmly convinced as we started this process, we would. I was convinced that uh, you always want to have access to rail as an as a efficient means to move product to us. We engaged actually ultimately three different studies, but I didn't believe the first two answers. But in all three studies, the railroad told us, the fertilizer industry told us, and the grain industry told us, all three, we did not need to be concerned about rail access. We did not need to be making an investment into rail for that functionality and capability. Once we became convinced we did not need rail, our total efforts moved to, then where's the best place to locate a facility for outbound? How can we be the closest to our farmers and to our fields and gain the maximum efficiency from that distribution point? Here's a map that shows Franklin and our fertilizer plant here, here's Shelbyville and all the land in between. You can start seeing the concentration of agriculture. We knew in fact, we wouldn't have been allowed had we wanted to. We, could, we had to stay away from these two rivers and the surrounding low ground. That would not be suitable for investment. We also knew we really didn't want to be too close to either the town of Shelbyville or Franklin. That left the center area as being the most desirable spot to make an investment in a new facility. We then started looking more in drilling down and looking in greater context at first, where's our current customer base? If we're gonna move a facility, we need to be concerned about, are we gonna move away from our current customers and become making a disadvantage to them? So each stop represents our current business. Here's our proposed building site. Here's Franklin, here's St. Paul. And you can start seeing in that 30 minute radius that we remain convenient and close to our core business that's already there. Next, we looked at concentration of, of all acreage. And even those customers that aren't doing things with us or fields that we don't currently serve, are we, how are we there? Each dark dot on this map represents concentration of corn acres. Each yellow dot, concentration of soybean acres. This is the greatest concentration of row crop agriculture we have anywhere in our marketplace in Southeast Indiana. And so we, you can see we have a great efficiency a great closeness to our proximity to our farm fields with this location. So here's a map of Shelby County Co-op. This is how they had the county zoned. And we went to Shelby County Planning Board and said, if you're gonna ask us to go someplace to build a fertilizer plant, where would you like us? This is where they said, stay in that light green area between the two rivers, fine. So with all that information, we next finally looked at road and infrastructure and here's the long-term plan to Shelby County. They plan on having a bypass road built. In fact, the process of building it right now on the west side of Shelbyville. Here's State Road 44. And Road 600, they call a connector road. It, they can view that as a major road for traffic that they want to keep current to help serve the community of Bogstown and the agri agriculture that's here. And this had three phases. So this is this little red strip here is the only place we ever looked at the possibility of building a fertilizer plant along State Road 44 or this major connector road 600. So we look, so as we move Franklin to the east, there's where we located ourselves. Today we look pretty smart because Poet has now built an ethanol plant with about three miles of us, and that really helps again bring row crop agriculture and never too yellow corn back to this area as importance. It helps solidify our plans to build here. I do realize though, that we aggravated our neighbors Shelby County Co-op as they're just about a half mile north of where we're presently building. The question can be asked, why didn't we work with Shelby County Co-op? Why did we do this and not include them? All I can say is we tried. 
Since 2003, we have reached out to Shelby County Co-op. We've asked them, we've, we've, we've talked about the possibility of doing this, the strength of doing it together, and they've elected not to. To their credit, two different times I have been before their leadership and their board. In 2008, Lewis McIntyre allowed me to come up to their board and speak to them. And again, in 2015, Denny Fry. And again, we're able to share information like this with that leadership group, our plans to go forward and our desire to do that with them and not in spite of them or around them. And there's been some back and forth over the last several months. The ultimate is the last of three letters we've received from Shelby, basically saying, we appreciate for the final time you're asking, but we really see things differently than you. We'll plan to go look forward as ourselves. We respect that. They're a good company. Uh, I respect Shelby County Co-op, but we have obviously moved forward and we would still entertain any, always, any kind of working relationship going forward. So here's our facility. We've got purchased 40 acres. And on this 40 acres, we're gonna have three buildings and some other vertical things going on. The big thing that I, I'm very proud of though, this is gonna be from an environmental stewardship standpoint, gonna be as good a facility as anywhere in the country. Every last drop of water that hits this property drains to the southeast. And this retention pond shown here will actually be prod where we have grass strips. So we're gonna be able to show water movement, surface water movement on that property. And if there's ever a concern about, are we doing something that is causing our ground to be affected or the, the rainwater to be affected, our rivers and streams to be affected, we're gonna have all of our water moving across grass that shows to ourselves and to the public what we're doing is done without any kind of containment involved. If there was, it'd be destroying the grass, killing the grass. We also have gate valves at the end of this retention pond. If for whatever reason decided we wanted to shut the flow of water off and retain it, all this surface water on this property, we can close the valve and keep water stored until we can address what's going on. And as I go into the buildings, each of our buildings have a sloped floor. They have their own containment. Each floor will slope to a center point that if we ever spilled something, for, this is our shop. If we ever spilled anything in our shop, it would be contained within our shop area. Uh, right next to our shop is our office building. We're gonna have large conferencing space. This room is gonna hold about 60 to 80 people. What we wanna be able to do is bring in farmers, our road employees, have equipment in the shop that you can walk around a planner on better planner calibration or big A, how do you service it, big A. And then be able to go to the classroom and interchange those two rooms as we train ourselves and the community. And we have other conference rooms and offices in here as well. Our second building on site is our chemical building, chemical seed building. It's a little bit larger than a football field. It is larger than we need in 2019 but we're building it to a place that we feel like we're gonna have the, the, the need for in the future. We're planning on having the same market share at this facility in the a, in a surrounding 20 mile radius as any other facility we operate. So we need to have this size and scale to be able to serve that size down the road. On this portion is our chemical building. There's two loadout bays. We'll have bulk chemical storage. We'll have a specific line just for filling mini bulks. And here's our bulk seed. Here will be a bulk seed load out. And here will be our storage containers on the, on the east side of that property. Again, that building has total separate containment. Any place we have a load out, the load out is covered. It has its own containment. That if we ever had a release in the warehouse, it'd be contained. If we have a release in the load out area. It's under roof and contained as well. And finally, our fertilizer building. This happens to be our building that we built in Greensburg two years ago. We're building a sister to this in Shelbyville right now, in Shelby County at Bogstown. It'll, it will have 6,500 tons of storage. That's going to more than double the storage capacity we had at St. Paul and Franklin. Plus, we're gonna have a declining weight system that allows us, instead of taking 40 to 60 minutes to load out a semi, for example, we can load a semi out with this system in five minutes. We plan to make the investments and do the things required to stay with or ahead of you as you grow in your own operations and your own desires to be faster with the investments you make. We're trying to stay with you with these kinds of investments. 
Equipment we'll have, here's what we're moving from our existing plants. Total of two road gators, a terror gator, and two lime rigs. We're also gonna add another road gator and more tendering and loading capacity. We plan to be ahead of you in our investments to be able to serve you again in that short window you have either in spring planting or in the fall. Burke Admire, who's been leading our Franklin facilities and lead the Bogstown branch. John Garlic, who's our manager at St. Paul, will be assistant manager. A lot of you know Barbie, she does a tremendous job at, at uh, St. Paul, will be our administrative help. And we also are bringing Tangent Fuel, who many of you are going to know. And uh, she's going to be heading in our in energy operations at this facility. So overall, uh, we're going to continue to operate both Franklin and St. Paul through the fall. We're going to start moving in as the buildings become available later for this fall. Then early January, we plan to occupy this space permanently. Once we do, we will look to sell Franklin. And for the moment, we're going to keep our uh, St. Paul facility in our own ownership. We have propane there and we would like to uh, keep that for now and make plans later if we're going to do it that longer term. There are no changes with everything I've talked about. It affects no changes or operations that are Greensburg, Hope, or Trafalgar operations. We're going to run those the same as we've always ran. So there's what we look like. I talked about a better mousetrap or I mean the high ground in southern Indiana. To me there's what it looks like. Again dark Yellow and green shows concentration of crop acreage. And the larger circles for us are where we're creating some of these larger facilities, whether it be Corridon, Cortland, Greensburg, or now Bogstown. But those are key distribution centers where we have the greatest efficiency in logistics. As we made those investments, we dropped away St. Paul, Franklin, Brownstown, and North Vernon. It's allowed us to gain more efficiency in, in less locations, and serve larger areas. We continue to see Trafalgar, Hope, Crothersville, and Salem as important service centers for those local markets as well. So again, this is our distribution plans going forward. And Boggs Tavern is a big important part of that. Customer support. If we're gonna do this, it's one thing to have logistics advantages. It's another thing to have the the, the, the knowledge and the information, the expertise to really help growers sort through and make the best decisions. Here's who we'll have in our Northern market at Bogstown. We have over eight people that in some portion of their time, some portion of what we expect them to be doing, will be working with those area growers, again, to help them sort out making the best decisions as what seed to plant, uh, what fertilizer plan to approach, and other things that might come forward and just to mention what we think others have, but we feel confident at this stage, we're bringing more resources to bear to help growers sort through solutions than other choices that are available. That also includes technology, and here's, we, we call that tracks. But as we do more to understand what's going on with the field, whether it be for our yield history, the inherent soil capability, or the soil fertility of that crop, or other things are going on like the weeds that are invading them, insects, all those kinds of things. As we try to understand that, develop a plan with the producer on how to treat that acre, that's called tracks. And we're employing the right product, right time, right place, right rate. That we really wanna do things well and responsibly. And uh, we make the investments to make that happen. There's who we have engaged. We have uh, within Premier, Nate Kemp and Brent Geis. We have additional resources as well. And here's some of the partners we use to help process that to happen. CropLink is our proprietary data software. We have FieldView, InWatch, AnswerTech, all helping us to store your information as well as other people's research and knowledge they gain and apply that to your own farm, your own situation. We think we do, we're confident we do this better than anyone else in our trade area. So, summarize, in Southeast Indiana, we want to own the high ground. We want to do it in a way that shows strong stewardship, uh, strong efficiency, we want to have storage and speed, and we're also going to have four seat hubs that again allows us to better serve this market. 
We have over 50 custom application rigs. So we're able to, to employ a lot of resources into targeted areas. If it's raining up north, we can shift resources to the south or to the west or to the east as ground becomes available and apply more attention to that than other areas. And finally, knowledgeable salespeople. We have over 12 people in our company that are dedicated to farmers' success, to knowing what farmers' desires, needs, and capabilities are, and aligning our resources with that. And finally, Trax puts that all together. I'd just like to end with this, the way we go to market, and I think it's important that we, we generate this notion to you that we really want to be in a position where you feel like your co-op understands you, your operation, and your own goals, and that we align ourselves with well-trained personnel, proven practices, and you're knowledgeable and dependable in what we do. And we really want to be seen as that cropping partner to your own operation. And ultimately, we're trying to do one of these four things. Make your job easier, improve your profitability, reduce risk, or increase your ability to be competitive and do better than those that are around you. We really want to be known as a company that if you're doing business with us, you're having greater success than those that aren't working with their local farmer-owned co-op. So that's a little bit of what we're doing. Uh, we'd love to share it with you in, in person and invite anyone to come by our facility and see what's going on. Again, we're going to occupy this coming January. Thank you.